Okay, so our, our third and final uh, speech comes from uh, Chris Allman. He's a campaign for liberty activist in uh, Oakland County. And he'll be giving a speech on the Second Amendment. We'll be talking about how you at the local level uh, can take a stand against unconstitutional gun control. Uh, it is obviously right around the horizon. He'll also be informing us on other local developments that are affecting our communities. And anyway, here's Chris. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Chris Allman, um, Deputy Coordinator, Oakland County Campaign for Liberty. And today we're going to be talking about how to, you know, how to reaffirm our Second Amendment rights at the local level. Um, so we can go on to the next page. Where's your space? There you go. Okay, so. I thought this was going to be on a little larger screen, but I'll read it for everyone's benefit. Um, the issue is we have we've currently witnessed a few mentally unstable individuals, um, unfortunately, in, initiate mass shootings across the country at Aurora, Colorado, and Newtown, Connecticut. Um, and never to let a good crisis go to waste, the the gun grabbing left has sprung into ap sprung into action uh, with their initiatives to enact national restrictions on high capacity magazines and and more gun registration and a ban on assault weapons again and uh, I mean those those assault weapons look scary after all so um, that was a joke <laughs> um, the uh, and, and further the uh, the actions of Congress may intrude on article 1 section 6 of our Michigan state constitution which says Every person has a right to keep and bear arms for the defense of himself and the state. Very important. Next slide. So, rather than sit idly and watch our rights be stripped from us by our federal government, we can leverage the rights enumerated to the people of the free and sovereign state of Michigan. Um, in the Tenth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, um, everyone is, should be familiar with the the Tenth Amendment, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So several activists have, have taken this issue to their local municip municipalities and have had ordinances or resolutions passed affirming citizens' rights to keep and bear arms. Some of those include East Coventry Township, Pennsylvania, Tilden Township, Pennsylvania, Carroll County, Maryland. McLeod County, Minnesota, Prosper, Texas, Syracuse, Kansas, Escanaba, Michigan, and Escota County, Michigan. We have our own activists here in the state. So we can and should do the same in the various various municipalities within Oakland County and the county itself. Thanks, Pete. So the task, um, we have a small leadership team here at, at Oakland County C4L. We can't be everywhere all the time. But uh, this, is where we, this is where we need your help. Um, we can't expect to be effective without your support. And uh, if you want to see your local municipality stand up for your rights, it'll take some effort, but together we can affect this change. What I'm proposing is that we take forward um, uh, proposals for ordinances which protect the, our Second Amendment rights, and then uh, it, should any any you know, legislation be passed at the federal level, um, that then that would, in effect, work to nullify that uh, offensive legislation. So, um, for if you want to discuss this further for your local area, you can contact myself. I'm Chris Allman. My number is here: five eight six six zero four zero five zero one. Or you can contact Dennis Mar Dennis Marburger, our coordinator. He's at 248-891-2785. Before we move on, we have a question. Yeah. I've noticed often that regulations from the township are overruled by the state. State and so, shouldn't we be going after the state level protection? Absolutely, absolutely. We should be going after all of it. But, but the the why local government works so well is because 
we're close to those who represent us here. Um, I don't, I don't live in Lansing. I, I live in Rochester Hills. Uh, Tom McMillan is my representative in, in the state congress, but uh, but I, I don't. He hasn't given me his phone number yet, and uh, and I, I I can't get him on the phone when I need to, but I can walk down to my city hall and talk to talk to those people who represent. Me. So we we have more influence on those who are who are closer to us. Those people who we can go down and, and talk to, and sometimes get in their face and say, "This is what we want. This is what we need." I, I kind of a follow-up question. I guess my question would be, what can be enacted at a local level that doesn't follow a follow of the state preemption laws? Resolution. Yeah. yeah. A resolution is is it's just a okay. It, a resolution is simply a. A, a legislative opinion put into okay. put into text. Okay. Allow me to comment on that in a general sense, and I hope one day to be able to share some of these ideas with the group in terms of a civil disobedience guerrilla warfare model. But very quick point: it is in our interest to create a constitutional crisis, a legislative crisis, with our local representation, even if the net result is that we are preempted by state law. A vocal dissonance between local opinion is always in our favor. It makes the issue visible. It makes it clear that we're not passively accepting what they're trying to impose on us from above. Okay. Right. I mean, the same the same argument could be had for, um, for you know, states like Colorado, who recently, um, recently, uh, it, Made a marijuana possession legal, and it, it but it it, it 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 technically is still under the federal. The federal law still says that that you can't do that. But I, 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 I respectfully disagree. If you guys are going to take on a local fight for a non-binding resolution, you might as well take that energy directly to the state legislature to do something that's going to change existing law. In particular, Michigan is the only state in the country which requires you to have a permit to purchase a pistol. Uh, in any state that doesn't allow it to be That would be a, a perfect law to take on. You can say, look, many, many other states allow you to get a pistol if you're 18 years old and not a felon. Um, and, you know, if you live in Rochester Hills and Tom McMillan's representative, great. He's the guy that would introduce a bill for you, something like that. Um, you know, yeah, the, the feds and, certain, and the state are not going to pay attention to a local resolution saying what the opinion of the legislature is. You know, I, I work for member Congress, and we get, from time to time, we get resolutions from the state when they pass non-binding resolutions saying they will remind Congress to do this and this. We just throw them right out. We don't care. You know, we care our constituents to say what we, what they want us to do. Those are we take time with. But we say, oh, the state of Michigan says we should do this. Well, thanks. We don't tell you how to do your job. You know, I mean, really, if you want to make a you make an impact, pick a good fight. Something that's going to change policy, and yeah, even if you're only—I mean, you know—you can organize locally for a state level fight. I would, I would suggest doing that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to argue with your with your stance. I mean, I, I think your stance is valid. We should take this up at the state level. Yes. But but the, but taking it up at the local level is not without value. Yes. And to clarify.